Welcome. TMJ, temporal mandibular joint, or TMD, temporal mandibular dysfunction. This is where the jaw, the mandibular part of our facial region down here, it attaches to the temporal area of the side of our skull, and it forms a joint. In that joint, there's a disc, just like the discs or cartilage between the vertebrae of your spine. Every time we open our mouth or close our mouth or go side to side, this joint is moving and articulating in that particular disc. And if this joint is out of its normal position, this can cause pain, dysfunction, inflammation. There are many symptoms that TMJ can cause, like clicking, grinding, popping, uh, burning pain, radiating pain, headaches, visual eye problems, tinnitus ringing in the ears, vertigo, uh, clogging actually in the eustachian tubes. One of the most important things that no one talks about pertaining to TMJ is forward head posture. If you think about a 12 pound weight going forward, what the muscles, particularly the suboccipital muscles as well as the posterior muscles of the neck, have to do as well as the masseter muscles of the jaw they become over constricted, they become even tighter. So this position causes a disruption in the normal biomechanics of the head, neck, shoulder area, causing more TMJ involvement that's quite overlooked every single day. So if you have forward head posture, you really need to work on those particular exercises like chin tucks, bringing your chin back like this, keeping your chin straight ahead, not up or down, but working the anterior deep neck flexors, strengthening rhomboids, bringing the shoulder blades back together, as well as stretching the chest, putting your arms inside the doorway and really stretching the chest muscles, the pectoralis muscles. I like you to actually go to my channel and look through those postural exercises. When you look at the side of the jaw, you can look at those two main muscles that we're gonna be concerned about here. One is the masseter muscles, and the other one is the temporalis muscle. The masseter muscles are the ones that actually squeeze your jaw closed. Uh, for example, when you chew, when you bite, or actually when you grind your teeth, we call bruxism, particularly when you're sleeping. If you have bruxism or you have that grinding, you notice that your dentist has told you you're grinding your teeth, you may need to get a particular bite or a mold to prevent those teeth from grinding. Uh, if you have continued pain or radiation or clicking of the jaw, I always recommend to get it evaluated by a specialist, a temporal mandibular specialist, a dentist, or someone that understands more about the biomechanics. So for our sake here, I wanna go ahead and give you a few very important stretches you can start doing and myofascial uh, exercises a particular massage in the muscles to release those muscles. Then I'm gonna show you after that a little technique that may do wonders for you to release that problem that you may be experiencing. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna do a couple exercises to release these muscles. Very safe, uh, very effective. We're going to contact two muscles, the masseter and the temporalis. The masseter muscles are in the jaw area. Again, these are the ones that allow your mouth to close and squeeze. As you take your fingers up here, open your mouth and close, you feel that movement. Those are the temporalis uh, muscles that actually work along with the TMJ because they come back and attach in that area as well. But as we work the masseter muscles, you're gonna use this part of your hand. You're just gonna go to the bottom part of the jaw and push in and up. Good, not real hard, just, just firmly, good. Should feel real good, real good. Three of them come up in the temporal region. You're gonna push up on the temporalis muscles. One, good. Two, should feel real good. Three, very good. Now we're gonna come back to the masseter muscles. We're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're gonna open our mouth slowly as we do it, like this. Close it, do it again. Good, one more time. Okay, now the reason why we do that is because we want to add active range of motion. Most people that teach you how to stretch muscles, they're doing it in a, uh, in a fashion where there's no movement. 
And obviously we want movement because movement is biomechanical. We want the life of that particular joint to go through its normal movement as we work those muscles hand in hand. So you could do the same thing on the temporalis. You could open the mouth. Good, just open it. If it's hurting you too bad, just open the best you can. Good, one more time. Good. And just by doing that, we're, we're, we're creating a change from the brain back to the joint. By stimulating these muscles, we're actually having a lot of neurological input, which hopefully will relax a lot of that area which is causing your pain. Now the next simple exercise is just taking the bottom part of the mandible, keep your bite normal the way it is, and just, I want you to just to push it side to side, gentle like this. Good. Little bit, side to side. And do that about 10 times on each side, but gentle, just to restore mobility. Then you're gonna take your, your fingers, or you can use your palm of your hand, or you can use this part of the hand, whatever is good for you. Or you can actually use your knuckles like this, and you just push, relax the, the bite, don't just relax the, the jaw, and just push straight back like this. Come back, relax. Good. You're going to do about eight to 10 of those. Now, what are we doing? We're trying to combat the joint by putting it through different ranges of motions, different angles. When we work any joint in the body, it's all about angles. It's about different angles, how we can hit that right angle to release whatever is dysfunction. Now, the last thing I want to tell you is something that can do wonders for you. And I hope it really does. My background entails lots of extremity adjusting. I have a lot of experience with the extremities of elbows, knees, shoulders, as well as the temporal mandibular joint. I can tell you there are hundreds of TMJ patients that I've adjusted over the many, many years that I prevented many surgeries. Uh, we prevented many surgeries by restoring proper movement and motion. But the first thing I want you to do after those stretches, now i like you to look in a mirror and as you open your mouth, I want to see, you're going you're gonna to be able to tell, if your jaw deviates to the left or to the right. For example, if I open my mouth and let's say it's going to deviate to the right, watch my jaw. And when you open, you may hear a clicking, but don't do it if it hurts. But as you open, you may see the jaw deviate to that side. Now what does that tell us? That tells us that that side of that joint is usually the one that's fixated. Now, what does fixation mean? Fixation means it's locked. It's not moving. So what happens is usually on the other side, it's more painful because it's hypermobile because it's moving more than it has to move because the other side's not moving enough. So generally what we have done in the past is we uh, as uh, chiropractors or those who are trained in this field, we would find a fixated joint and we would release it, we'd mobilize it. But obviously, I'm not here to mobilize your joints. I'm here to tell you something subtle that you can hopefully do that may release it on its own. So what you're gonna do is you're going to contact that same point that we showed you before that you were doing the massages with, okay? On the fixated side, which is the side your jaw deviated to, let's say it was my right, and as you apply slight pressure on the joint, just apply enough pressure, you're not gonna thrust or do anything forceful. As you do it, you're gonna open your mouth the best you can to where it doesn't hurt, just to that point, like this. And you're gonna do that about five or six times. Now, while you're doing that, as you apply pressure, as we apply movement, again, biomechanics, as we apply movement and that pressure, many times that pressure will release the joint, allowing the joint to become normal again. And that's what it's about. We're trying to allow the body from a non-invasive procedure, from no one going in there and, and cutting and chiseling and drilling and doing invasive things to you, to allow that TMJ to come back to its normal balance so this thing can repair and heal. I wish you a lot of luck. And again, I tell you, if this condition gets worse or you continue to get significant pain or complaints, always get it evaluated by a specialist to rule 
any pathological problem out. I hope this really helps you. I'm excited to see what it's done for you. I ask you to share this video with others so they can benefit. Leave your comments below. I love, love to hear how you did from this. I ask you to subscribe if you haven't so you can continue to receive the best self-help videos for your health and your well-being. I pray that this video makes a big change in your life to get out of pain, to feel good again, to be able to chew and enjoy the delicious food that God has for you on this earth. Make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.